cast your crowns at your feet. We cast our crowns at your feet. We cast our crowns at your feet. We cast our crowns at your feet, Lord. We cast our crowns at your feet.
washes white as snow It washes white as snow It's your holy blood, Lord It's why we can enter it Thank you, Lord Thank you for your blood, Jesus Come on, can we just thank him for his blood tonight? Thank him for his goodness Thank you, Jesus Thank you for your blood, thank you for your mercy, thank you for your kindness, Lord, thank you, thank you, thank you, Jesus, thank you, thank you for washing us clean.
presence of your majesty
Stand 
Oh. Uh.
but for you and you alone, Lord. We are thankful. Your beautiful, beautiful, precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Why don't we also just thank our worship team for loving Jesus for an hour and 15 minutes. We love you, thanks. I think the choir's staying here, though. So. we thank you. You are the true gift. Holy Spirit, you know everybody's heart in this place. You know where every single life is sitting in this room. God, I pray you make our hearts a soft heart, a place of where every seed that comes out, Lord Father, let it land good soil. You are the seed, Jesus. We love you, Lord, in your precious name. Amen. Amen. How many go? How many guys know the gospel is amazing news? Um, we sang a line in that song earlier, Majesty. It's, I just, it's one of my favorite lines of all of songs. It says, forever I am changed by your love. And that is it. That is it right there, that we all in this room were changed by the love of God. How many know it wasn't our love for him, it was his for us. When he met me that day in the shower, when I was coming off of drugs, I couldn't love him, I couldn't see him. But he met me there and he loved me. The gospel was one message, he loves you. He loves you, it's not our love for him. We didn't do anything. In fact, our love for him is a response of the true gospel penetrating our heart. When you come straight in contact with the love of God, it changes everything. I mean the true love of God. And what is the love of God? It's Jesus Christ and him crucified. It's the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. That's his love. And it still speaks today. Listen, his love still saves today. It's still enough for every cycle of sin, every mistake. I promise you, man. There is true freedom found, and all we have to do is believe and have faith in him. The Bible says it's by grace through faith in the God-man Christ Jesus that each and every one of us in this room are saved. I'm going to read something out of Romans uh, chapter 3. It starts, it's in verse 23. It says, for everyone has sinned. We have all fall short of the glory of God. Every single one of this room has missed it. Not one person in this room has not missed it. It says, yet God in his grace freely makes us right in his sight. He makes us right in his sight. He did this through Christ Jesus when he freed us from the penalty of our sins. For God presented Jesus to us as a sacrifice for our sins. 
People are made right with God when they believe that Jesus Christ sacrificed his life and shedding of his blood. The sacrifice shows that God was being fair when he held back and did not punish those who sinned in times past. For he was looking ahead and including them in what he would do in this present time. God did this by demonstrating his righteousness, for he himself is fair and just, and he makes sinners right in his sight when they believe in Jesus. That's what he does. One moment, listen, I promise you, one moment you could be addicted, and the very next second you could be right in God's eyes when you believe in him. Listen, November 21st, 2014, I was a drug addict. But November 2014, November 22nd, I was free in him. That's what happened. And listen, it, it, it's not just for the drug addict. Listen, it's for the one who's religious and goes through repetition week after week. The one that comes into church, but yet is dead inside. That may look alive with their hands lifted up, but man, inside you know that you're not right and you're not living for him. But listen, his blood is enough, I promise you. And in one moment, he can make you right with him. A couple of days ago, we were playing basketball, a bunch of guys, and there was this young man that was sitting uh, on the side, and he ended up playing basketball with us, and it was amazing. But I felt to go over there and just tell him about the gospel. And I got to preach the gospel to him. His name was Owen, and he gave his life to Jesus, which is absolutely amazing. But listen, what's amazing about that is after he, 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 I, I shared the gospel to him, he gave his life to him, he said this. He says, that was the first time I've ever prayed to God ever in my life. And I said, isn't it amazing, Owen, that the very first time you've ever talked to God, he just made his home inside of you, and now you're alive in him. That's what he does still to this day. I promise you, man. Listen, if you need Jesus, not if you need church, not if you need prayer, not if you need to come to the altar again, but if you need Jesus and Jesus alone, he's here today. I felt today as I was flying in on the plane that there's people who are weary in this room. That you're, I just felt the heaviness. There may be a, a weariness. And there's something that Jesus says to those who are weary. He says, come to me, come to me. Not come to a church, not come to a man, but come to me, all who are weary. So listen, if, even if you're weary and you feel like giving up, maybe, you know, scripture says, don't grow weary in well-doing, for in due season you shall reap a harvest. But man, I feel, maybe you, felt, you just feel like giving up. Like, it's enough. Like, I tried, I tried, I can't, I can't get over this. I feel depressed, anxiety still. I don't know what to do. Jesus is saying, come to me. Come to me tonight. And I pray by the Holy Spirit that free indeed is yours. I pray that by the Holy Spirit, that freedom is truly yours for all the days of your life. Listen, we're gonna make mistakes, but I promise you, we're not a slave to sin anymore. That's what he does. The first response isn't sin. It's now I need him. And so if we could just close our eyes and bow our, bow our heads, I pray by the Holy Spirit that if you feel him saying, just run to me, son, run to me, daughter, if you're weary, if you're burdened down, if you feel like giving up, you're like, man, this race has been hard. He's here. If you're in the room and you say, yeah, that's me, I need Jesus, I would love for you just quickly just to lift your hand and say, I need him. Thank you, Jesus, for these hands. Thank you, Lord, for all these hands. Secondly, if you're in the room and you're going through the motions, man, you're in church, you're raising your hands, but Monday through Saturday, it sucks doesn't feel right. You can't go to sleep at night because you have these thoughts that you're not enough and you're never going to make it. And man, when am I going to be finally real? If that's you, I would just love for you to lift your hand and say, yeah, that's me. Thank you, Jesus, for those hands. If I could have everybody stand in the room. And what we do when we say come to the altar, we, what we mean is come to Jesus. And so if you lifted your hand on one of those things and you said, yeah, that's me, I would love for you guys just to come out of the aisles and come to him. By faith, we come to him. Just like I said earlier, it's by faith. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Listen, don't hesitate. You get him in exchange. It's amazing. You give your all, you give all of you up and you get him. 
you get the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Thank you, Jesus. says he whom the sun sets free is free indeed where the spirit of the Lord is there is true freedom thank you Lord and now in these next few moments we're going to be able to talk straightly to him <laughs> the man of Galilee Jesus Christ of Nazareth we can talk straight to him it is still by faith guys so I pray every one of you guys that came up here that you guys just see him by faith and talk directly to him. Let's say this all together, this prayer. Say, Jesus, I give you all of me. My past, every mistake, every sin, my present and my future. I give it all to you. Jesus, I accept you as my Lord and Savior. I believe you are the begotten of the Father, that you lived a perfect life. You were tempted at all points, yet without sin. You are fully God and you are fully man. Jesus, I believe that you died on the cross for me, that you rose again on the third day, that you ascended to the right hand of the Father where you rule and reign and one day you're coming back for me Jesus I love you I give you me me for you and you for me I deny myself I pick up my cross and I follow you in Jesus name Amen 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 You know, what's amazing is this reality right here, right now, it's true that God lives inside of you. And tomorrow morning when you wake up, you're still free indeed. He's still the God that set you free. It wasn't just something you did the night before to get rid of maybe some guilt, some shame, or the mistake you made, and okay, but now I'm gonna go about my week. No, 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 this is a true life following Jesus. And you can open up the scriptures like here and read Colossians chapter two, verse 13. Tomorrow morning, every day we get to read our Bibles. It says, you were dead because of your sins and because of your sinful nature, but it yet now it's cut away. Then God made you alive with Christ, for you gave all of your sins. He took all of your sins. Scripture says he canceled the record of charges set against you by nailing him to the cross. That he disarmed principalities, rulers, and authorities. He shamed them publicly by victory over them on the cross. That's yours tomorrow morning and Tuesday morning and Wednesday morning and Thursday morning and Friday morning and all the days of your life. And it's for your children's children as well. In Jesus' name. So get into these scriptures every day for it is true life and true food. And every day we get to talk to God, just like you did today, that he has given us full access to him. And just like a good father, we can ask him questions and talk to him about life. And he still is the way, the truth, and the life. And scripture says that the steps of a righteous man or woman are ordered by the Lord. And number three, we, we, we always encourage this highly that you guys get connected to people that love Jesus. Get connected to a body of believers. That you guys can love him and be with him and those that can pray with you and encourage you, man. I, I've been in times and places where I could feel the prayers of friends and family. In fact, I remember I was going through something one day. I was discouraged and I was driving to school and I remember I, I felt just this weight lift off my shoulders and at that same time, someone called me and said, hey, I was praying for you in this moment. I just felt led by the Lord to pray for you. And that's what a body of believers, what a church does. And you get connected and plant your life into it. And not just be a potted plant, but one where you grow roots deep down inside. And 
And then number four is that you guys get baptized in water, every single one of you guys here. It's a severance of the old and man, an old woman. True severing is a beautiful sword that comes by the spirit and the old man is dead and a new man is alive. And we get to tar- partake of what Jesus Christ did, his death, his burial, and his resurrection. And a conscious of that's seared by, marked by mistakes that we've made in the past is completely, completely made new. And then number five is, we're gonna pray this, is that you guys encounter the Holy Spirit and that he clothes himself with himself over you guys. And the power of the Holy Spirit and the love of God that's made known by the Holy Spirit is your guys's. And number six, that same empowerment is for you guys to all be amazing witnesses of Jesus. That you guys can tell your friends, your family, your neighbors, people on the streets, wherever you're at, you guys can be orators of the gospel in clarity and authority. You will see people saved, healed, delivered, the dead raised in Jesus' name because Jesus says we can do it. And every single one of you guys up here can. So let's just stretch our hands together as a family over all of them. And let's believe by faith, guys. Let's, as we, we stretch our hands, we're not just stretching our hands. We're putting faith to the stretch. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray, Holy Spirit, we thank you that you are near and that you are close. And that you baptize them into yourself, Jesus, for you are the great baptizer. Holy Spirit, we thank you. I pray that the words of Jesus are clear to them because of you, Holy Spirit, that your love is shed abroad and known truly to each and every one of them because of you, Holy Spirit. We thank you for the empowerment of the Holy Spirit, that they will be endued with power in Jesus' name, that they will be a flame lit burning all the days of their life. Lord, I pray in Jesus' name where there may be timid, Father, I pray courage comes in Jesus' name. For you said the righteous are as bold as a lion. And I thank you, they are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus in this very moment. So I pray they see you, Jesus. They love you all the days of their life. In your precious, beautiful name we pray, amen, amen. Come on, why don't we, let's just thank Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord, for every single life that is coming out of darkness into your marvelous life. In Jesus' name, we can welcome them back to their seats. Give them a hug. Tell them, welcome to the family of God. Amen. Thank you, Lord. All right, why don't we can all sit down and I'm gonna invite Pastor Wally up and we are, yeah, there's Pastor Wally. Why don't we uh, go right back into worshiping Jesus? That's what we're gonna do.
can we honor and glorify the Lord? Jesus, we crown you with all praise. We crown you with all glory and with all honor. We sing holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty tonight. We love you. We praise you. In Jesus' name we pray and everybody says amen, amen. Can we honor our choir tonight? What a beautiful, beautiful job. Thank you, choir. You can be dismissed. Thank you, guys. You can take your seats as we continue worshiping the Lord tonight with offering. How many of you know this is worship? This is a continuation of worship as we bring our tithes and our offerings to the Lord. Before we go any further, though, into offering, I do want to let you know of a couple of announcements that's going on here at Jesus Image. The first is this Tuesday. Let me hear you say this Tuesday. This Tuesday, we actually have a prayer night for Jesus 22. How many of you know that the Lord is going to move beautifully in the next couple of weeks at Jesus 22 on those fairgrounds? And it's going to be a mighty time, but there's something when God's people gather together and, and seek the Lord on one thing, um, and that's for the Lord to move and have his way at that event. And so we'd ask you to come. You can register. There should be a graphic with a QR code uh, coming up ready for that in just a moment. Um, so that's this Tuesday at 6.30 um, at Harvest Time International if you want to join us. It's also on the Church Center app if you're a Jesus Image member and uh, you have the Church, Inter Church Center app downloaded, you can register there. That's this Tuesday at 6.30. We're going to seek the Lord together for him to move at Jesus 22. And the next thing is uh, December 23rd, Friday, December 23rd, we have a special Christmas service planned and here at, uh, at OCC and uh, believing that the Lord is going to do something really beautiful for Christmas. So we ask that you bring your family, bring your friends, those that are joining you for Christmas, Friday, December 23rd, as we celebrate the Lord's birth here. Um, and uh, it's going to be a beautiful time. If you want more information, you can always go to our website, jesusimage.tv for that. All right, let's worship the Lord today with our tithes and our offerings. We're going to go to the scriptures in Malachi chapter 1. So if you have your Bibles, you can turn with me there, Malachi chapter 1. We're going to read in verse 6. And this is a little bit of a lengthy passage, so stay with me here. But I, I believe as I was praying tonight of what the Lord would have me share, this has been something that's actually been, the Lord has been showing me in my wife and I's tithes and offerings to him in this season. And I wanted to share this with you. And so Malachi chapter 1 verse 6, it says, The Lord of heaven's army says to the priests, A son honors his father, and a servant respects his master. If I am your father and master, where are the honor and respect I deserve? You have shown contempt for my name. But you ask, how have we ever shown contempt for your name? You have shown contempt by offering defiled sacrifices on my, offer, on my altar. Then you ask, how have we defiled the sacrifices? You defile them by saying the altar of the Lord deserves no respect. When you give blind animals and sacrifices, isn't that wrong? And isn't it wrong to offer animals that are crippled and diseased? Try giving gifts like this to your governor and see how pleased he is, says the Lord of heaven's armies. We're going to continue on. Go ahead, beg God to be merciful to you. But when you bring that kind of offering, why should he show you any favor at all, asks the Lord of heaven's armies. How I wish one of you would shut the temple doors so that these worthless sacrifices cannot be offered. I am not pleased with you, says the Lord of heaven's armies, and I will not accept your your offerings, but my name is honored by people of other nations from morning till night. All around the world, they offer sweet incense of pure offerings in honor of my name, for my name is great among the nations, says the Lord of heaven's armies. But you dishonor my name with your, acu with your actions. By bringing contemptible food, you are saying it's all right to defile the Lord's table. You say it's too hard to serve the Lord and you turn up your noses at my commands, says the Lord of heaven's armies. Think of it. Animals that are stolen and crippled and sick are being presented as offerings. Should I accept from you such offerings as these, asks the Lord. Cursed is the cheat who promises to give fine ram from his flock, but then sacrifices a defective one to the Lord. 
And listen to this last part. For I am a great king, says the Lord of heaven's armies, and my name is feared among the nations. I know that was a lengthy piece of passage, but how many of you love the word of God? Aren't you thankful for the word of God? Aren't you thankful for the Holy Scriptures? Something that I want us to really, really take seriously is this idea of bringing our tithes and our offerings to the Lord. We read in this passage here that they were bringing something that wasn't their best. They were actually insulting God by bringing him something that was not worthy of him. And that would be something that I would ask you tonight is what you're giving the Lord when he comes to your tithes and to your offerings worthy of the one that you're giving it to. We were just singing that song, how beautiful, how majestic, how wonderful is the Lord that we serve. The Lord Jesus. Psalm 95 talks about how he holds the, the earth, the depths of the earth and the mountains in his palm of his hand. And as we bring our tithes and offerings, we're not just bringing it to Jesus' image. We are bringing it to the Lord himself. And he is not worthy of some random sacrifice. He's not worthy of just our, our, our somewhat best. He is worthy of the very greatest that we have. And I would challenge you tonight on this idea of tithes and offerings. Maybe you've been tithing, but it's actually just gotten to a place where your heart's not in. It's just a, now it's just a habit that you do. When was the last time that you gave an offering to the Lord? that cost you something that was worthy of him. This is something that recently my, my wife and I, we, uh, we, we received a, a, a blessing. The Lord is faithful and good. And, and, and so we were praying about, all right, Lord, what should we give? And we just felt the Lord on our, move on our hearts, like give this amount. We're like, Lord, that's a lot more than the tithe. And we sat there and we, we prayed together. And we're like, Lord, we're not going to give you something that's not worthy we're not going to give you something that doesn't cost us something. When we give to the Lord, it should be an offering, a sacrifice, something that moves our hearts because of how much it is. Jesus talks about this when he says, where your treasure is, there your heart is also. When we give to the Lord, it should cost us something. And I'd ask you tonight, Maybe you've gotten caught up in the mundane of, of, of just giving and yeah, I'm going to give a little bit here. I'm going to give a little bit there. No, no, no. I would ask you tonight to ask the Holy Spirit to show you something that you can give. Maybe it's you need to be faithful with your tithe. The Bible talks about in Leviticus how the tithe is actually holy to the Lord. Or maybe tonight you need to ask the Holy Spirit to, to, to show you a number, maybe it's, it's to show you a place in your heart that you've been holding back from him when it comes to his finances and you need to give an offering tonight, something that's gonna cost you, something that's gonna take you to really sacrifice. I would ask you to ask the Holy Spirit that tonight. And so as we give and as we get ready to give, Lord, I, I, I wanna pray over you a blessing and we're gonna do this together. So why don't you close your head, close your eyes, bow your head and let's pray. Jesus, we ask you tonight to search us. Lord, let us never come and give you something that doesn't cost us. Lord, let us never defile you, dishonor you by giving something that doesn't cost us something. Lord, you modeled this so beautifully by giving your precious son, Jesus, for us. So Lord, tonight, we ask that you'd show us the areas in our hearts that we've been holding back from you. Lord, I pray a blessing of your people that as they give tonight, Lord, that would give in a place of honor and sacrifice to you, Lord. We thank you. We bless you. Lord, I pray a blessing of your people that as they give, as they honor you in this area, that you will bless them. We give you the glory. We give you the honor. And we give you the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody says, Amen. Amen. If you're watching online, there's a text to give option there on the screen that you can follow to give. If you're here in the room, there's the screens here that can show you how to give as well as our ushers are going around with envelopes. All you have to do is simply just slip up your hand. Our ushers will come and bring you an envelope and you can rush the buckets now and drop those off. We love you. We'll be right back in just a moment.
Steph, can you sing that again? Just one more time. Worthy Choir, come on. You are Stand. We'll know that a Jesus movement is upon us when people start coming for the sake of Jesus. And we'll know that a Jesus movement is upon us when we're more aware of Jesus than the movement. determined to know nothing except Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Nothing this world has to offer will ever satisfy your soul. Only Jesus will satisfy your soul. Jesus is so real. He's so near. the hero. He's the hero. Jesus is the hero. That was good. I am so excited. It hit me. I was looking at the calendar today and I was like, oh my gosh, it's less than two weeks away. As you know, uh, nights are open, but you want to come to the whole thing. But if you know someone that needs to hear the gospel, that's believing for healing in their body, or just needs to be set free, bring them. 
bring them. There's no excuse. You can't say, well, I can't come because I don't have money for the ticket. Nights are free. We did this, and this is an offering for us as a church. It's not easy to open up the night sessions for free for us, but the reason we did that is because we want the lost to come and get set ablaze with Jesus. Amen? So if you know someone, bring them. It's right around the corner, and church family, pray. I know we're going to have prayer meetings. Those are going to be amazing. I really feel something on that this year. Um, but pray, this is, this is the Lord's event, but it's your event too. You have to look at it like this is not just an event that Jesus Image puts on. No, you're a part of it. If you're a part of this church family, you are a part of this event. So pray and let's believe that God is going to shake our city with first love with Jesus. Amen? Uh, before I get started, um, I thought I saw Judah because he's got a mullet and he stands out wherever he is. Um, that was supposed to be funny. But uh, I saw him... <laughs> I, earlier, and I was like, uh, during the choir special, I was like, he's gone. And then I, they just picked him up. He was having an encounter, and they took him right behind that curtain. He's probably still back there. And the crazy thing, and th that's behind that curtain, I've told some of our team this, that's where Claudio Frizon uh, encountered the Lord. You know that story where he came, and my dad laid hands on him, and he was hungry for the Lord, and he will be with us very soon. Um, it was right behind that curtain where he had an encounter with the Lord, and then he went back to his country and and they got just in blasted by the Lord. So that's really cool. Lord, do it for Judah in Jesus' name. Do it for Judah. I love that kid. Well, as you know, Michael and I just came back from uh, Dallas. We were in Orange County, California uh, with the circuit riders, Lindy and the team. And just that was amazing. What God is doing there is phenomenal. And the Lord really moved in a powerful way. And it was Good for Michael and I to be back on our own stomping grounds to see all that the Lord has done. I do not miss that church there at all. I love this church way better. Um, but, you know, we pastored for a short season, but it really, it was like, it was under my dad's ministry and it was, it was awesome. But Michael used to wear suits and I would wear pantyhose and I was like, thank the Lord, we've been delivered. Um, but we were just reminiscing and we were like, gosh, the Lord has done so many amazing things. It's true. We've been delivered. You know, we were trying to be like my parents and that was like the stupidest thing ever because we just didn't know what we were doing. We're like, well, I guess we need to come in a tie and, and I should just get my mom's skirts and put on pantyhose and like, you know, you just have to just let the Lord lead. But it was so, it was so nice to be back and uh, just be with each other. And then we went to my, my dad's. Um, Michael just texted me. I thought he was going to be like, why are you telling the stories? He just says, he's resting. Um, then we went to my dad's 70th birthday party, uh, which was yesterday. And it was just, it was so neat to, they did a video of his life. And I think Michael shared it this morning. They, uh, they ended the video with him uh, just pouring into this next generation. And Jesus' image was a really big part of it. And it was really beautiful to see. And they were showing some of the old crusade clips. And it was hard not to get emotional because the Lord has been so faithful. And I just can't believe that I got to witness some of the things I got to see with my own eyes. And, you know, when you, and maybe this will tie into my sermon, maybe, maybe it won't. But when you think about what the Lord has done, it's really hard to get comfortable and familiar with that because he's so good. And when you say, Lord, yes, do it again, you're signing yourself up for more in Jesus. But when you sit there and go, I've seen it all, done it all, that doesn't impress me, then you're just going to live your whole life that way, which would be such a tragedy. It's, it's amazing what God has done. It's amazing what God has done not just here at Jesus Image, but so many places. I mean, the circuit riders, the, they, those, they, they were very young. Uh, they were so hungry for the Lord. I'm like, this is, I don't ever want to get used to this, Jesus. I don't ever want to treat this as common. And what I'm going to speak about tonight is um, offense. And it's been something I thought I would talk about for a while. And I just didn't feel... Um, the release to talk about it yet, but I really feel, this is just my opinion, I feel like there's such a spirit of division against the body of Christ like I've never seen before. And the only way that we can overcome that is through clinging to Jesus like never before. You know, it's funny, sometimes people are offended towards you and you have to watch your heart that you don't be offended towards the people that are offended at you because now you're in sin and you're falling into the same trap that they did and that makes you no better than they are. 
And I just feel like it's something we have to always protect as a church family here, as a school family here, as a body at large. This goes way beyond Jesus' image. To be really honest with you, I don't know a leader right now that is not walking through going against the spirit of division right now. I say that with all of my heart. That's not an exaggeration. I don't know one leader in the body of Christ right now that is not facing division. The enemy has no new tricks, no new games. It's the same thing over and over. And you might think that you won't fall into that trap, but the moment you think that you won't, you're signing yourself up to fall into the trap. Let me tell you why. Because you're saying, I don't need Jesus to walk this out every day. Yes, you do. You need Jesus to get up in the morning and brush your hair and teeth. You need Jesus as soon as you open your eyes in the morning because my goodness, that your mind can even start just first thing in the morning with all kinds of things. We need the Lord and it breaks my heart that there is so much division and offense and bitterness and jealousy and all of these things, self-entitlement. Oh, we're gonna hit all of that tonight. I hope that's okay because it has to stop. We need unity. And I've taught on that. We've taught on that here. There's something about the body being united. We have to be united right now. I don't know when the Lord's coming back. I'm not going to try to try to be this prophet thing that's like, everyone's like, he's coming soon. We're like, yeah, obviously, like life is going on. Who knows when he's coming back? I don't know. The Bible doesn't say, but we do know that the hour is getting nearer. Yeah. We do know that things are really accelerating right, right now like never before. We do know that in the Bible that the disciple says these were the last days, and that was a long time ago, so we know we're getting closer. We know that, right? But what can break up what God is doing? Division in the body of Christ. What can stop unity? Division in the body of Christ. What can take you out of the call of God and the will of God in your life? Bitterness and offense. Every time. It's nothing new. That's what I've, I've said this so many times. There's, it's the same story, different faces, different cases. You look at life and you go, it's the same thing every time. It's the same trap every time. It's the things that, it's, it's nothing new, just different people. And I don't want to fall into that trap because I'm no better than anyone else in this room. I can fall into that trap just as easily as you can. So we have to guard against it. Amen and fight to be unified, and fight for, for loving each other, fight for humility. You know what humility is? It's so many things I could preach a sermon on humility. I won't right now. But humility is preferring one another over yourself. Humility is walking lowly and meek. Humility is not thinking too highly of yourself. That's why I love the writings of Paul. I'm in that right now in the New Testament. He, he was so beautiful with the way he talked about himself. He was, he, he, he was I think, did Michael talk about Paul today? Okay, I was getting ready trying to be quiet when he was on Zoom preaching to you guys today because we had a flight. We literally went right from the live stream. He went off and we ran to our flight and then landed and I came right here and Michael went to go rest his voice and be with the kids. So fun times. I thought he said something about Paul. Okay, it wasn't just my imagination, but he was short in stature, what people say. He he, 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 in his own words, says, I am, I'm not a, a man of, basically, I, I, I'm not a great speaker, but what he had was Jesus in the cross, and he clung to that. And we really need to evaluate ourselves. and I'm going to give you scripture for this as well, but we really need to, as a church, evaluate ourselves and really look openly and honestly in, within and go, I have these issues. I have pride. I judge. I'm, I'm, I, I deal with entitlement. And if you do, there's no shame. We all deal with these things. These are, again, this is nothing new. I have dealt with it too. I still do at times and I'll have to give it to the Lord and go, it's under the blood of Jesus. Because a prideful heart is a scary heart in my opinion. What does the Bible say about pride? It comes before the what? The fall. Well, I don't want any of us to get blind with pride that we fall into a ditch and lose our way. That's not how we want to end, right? All right, so how to overcome offense. Offense and division are the enemy's tool to divide the church. Offense will kill your destiny. It just won't stop it. It will completely annihilate your destiny. You will not be able to be effective for the Lord and used by God the way that you are called to be used by the Lord if you deal with offense. 
because it starts with offense and then it grows into bitterness and it grows into judgment and it grows into jealousy. And then by then, what does the Bible say about jealousy? Where there's jealousy, there is every evil work. So we all deal with these things, but you have to catch it. And that's why I feel like I, I through the Lord's grace, I wanna hit on this tonight because I can promise you there's probably more than half of you in the room that deal with some kind of offense. It was really quiet when I said that. It's true. It's true. It's, I hear about it all the time. Offense is like a cancer. And when it gets in, it spreads. And the only way to kill it is to uproot it. And what offense does in bitterness is it looks for other offended people. And then it grows. It grows. And the only way that we can dismantle that is when someone, the Lord, but when someone comes in and speaks truth and says, no, no, we can't allow this here. I refuse to listen to this. I refuse to be a part of this conversation. I refuse to judge. I refuse to be entitled. I refuse that. We have to refuse those things because we cannot give, the, the hour is too serious right now to give the enemy any place. We won't see a move of God if we are all divided, like we know we are called to see. And this goes beyond Jesus' image. The body of Christ, the Lord, a harvest is coming like never before. Do you believe that? A harvest is coming like never before, but we're so divided that we're fighting against each other, which is only dividing the body even more when we should just be going against the principalities of this world and loving Jesus like never before together. We need each other. We need each other. This is not the time to be competitive and petty. This is the time to lock arms together. Like I said before, really unite, not this false unity that everyone talks about, this false unity that's, that's just counterfeit, like real unity in the body, real unity. So familiarity brings offense. Losing thankfulness brings offense. Please listen to me. I say this in love, and I've dealt with all of these things. I'm speaking from experience. Not being content with your circumstances brings offense. Comparison brings offense. Do not compare yourself to each other. You will never win doing that. Because when we start comparing ourselves to one another to make yourself feel better, better, you are gonna find a fault and an issue with your brother and sister in the Lord. It's impossible not to. And you're gonna find something to be offended about easily. I could find offense in any one of you I love so much. If I wanted to, if I thought long enough and hard enough, you'd be like, why did Amy look at me that way? I could find something. She didn't respond to my text with an exclamation mark. She just put a period. So that means her heart wasn't in it. She saw my post and she didn't like it. Like we could, there's so many, I've actually had people that have said these things to me, okay? I could find a reason to be offended. Whatever you're looking for, you will find. If you want peace, you will find peace. If you want joy, you will find joy. If you want to love one another, you will find love for your brother and sister. Even the people that have wronged you and hurt you, you will find it if you search for it. The Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. It's what's in your heart. Life has taught me something. And I'm not that old, but I've been around the block long enough. I don't care, did a kid like that? I heard a little kid laugh, or maybe one of our students just sounds like a kid. I don't know, they're very young, a lot of them. But I have been around long enough where I have actually changed like how I think about things in a good way. I'm like, I don't care what you say anymore. Your life speaks. The way you are speaks. How you transitioned out of the last place you were will speak to me about how I can trust you to transition out of here. That speaks. Not what your words say, because words are cheap. Show me with your life. And that's how we have to be as Christians. Your life should speak who you are. Again, that's why the Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. The other day, I was angry. Me and Michael were just not agreeing on something. And I got a little snippy, shocker. And 
He goes, well, that was a little rude. I said, no, it wasn't. I'm fine. He goes, no, your, your heart is speaking right now. You're frustrated and angry, and it's coming out. He goes, and then he gave me that scripture, of course, which I was like, I couldn't, I couldn't argue. I was like, you're right. Oh, it does say that. And he was like, you need to go settle in and figure out what is causing you to be so frustrated right now. I'm like, I'm tired. I'm just weary. I'm, there's just so many things. And he was like, then you give it to the Lord and stop complaining about it. I wish we all had more people like that in our lives. Because what typically happens is you find a bitter Betty that's there just waiting to like help you out with your problems and you go and that conversation looks a little different. You're right. You have every reason to feel weary. You've been done dirty. This is wrong. You should feel offended. You're free to feel this way. I love that I have a husband that will shut that down right then and there. I pray we can be those kind of friends to one another because I need that. Do you need it? Okay, come find me. (laughs) <laughs> I'm joking. I need it. I'm glad that I have people that speak truth to me. I don't want you to tell me what I want to hear if it's not what I need to hear. Because I have a goal in mind. I want to look like Jesus. I want to be like Jesus. And I have so far to go. So far to go. But man, how we need the Holy Spirit to convict us with his loving power like he does. And he does, and it's sometimes so faint that we're not listening. It's like, don't say that. Don't listen to that. You just judged. No, I didn't. And you just, we can quickly brush it off. Oh, I'm just concerned. No, no, that was a judgment towards someone that you don't know anything about. According to the Bible, that's a sin. Give it to the Lord. Deal with it, and let's move on. Let's go to Matthew 13, 53, 58. I really feel at the end of the service tonight, we'll see what the Holy Spirit does, that I feel like he's going to give us an opportunity, an opportunity tonight to really get free from these things. Because I do feel like there's some people in the room, even people that are offended because people have been offended towards them, that need to make it right with the Lord. Isn't it silly how that happens? Like I said, it just spreads. Matthew 13, 53 through 58. This really speaks of um, familiarity to me about Jesus, how people treated him. It says, when Jesus had finished telling these stories and illustrations, he left that part of the country. He returned to Nazareth, his hometown. When he taught there in the synagogue, everyone was amazed and said, where does he get this wisdom and the power to do miracles? Listen to this. Then they scoffed. He's just the carpenter's son, and we know Mary, his mother, and his brothers, James, Joseph, Simon, and Judas. All of his sisters live right here among us. Where did he learn all of these things? And they were, listen, deeply what? Offended, if you're reading the New Living Translation, and refused to believe in him. See, offense kills belief. Then Jesus told them, a prophet is honored everywhere except in his own hometown and among his own family. And so he did only a few miracles there because of their unbelief. This is Jesus. A much better resume than any of us have here. But how often do we do that? God uses somebody in our life, maybe even someone we don't like and agree with. And right away we start looking at their resume and going, but wait, I don't like their family, or I don't like where they come from, or I don't like their church, or I don't like how they worship there. And we find reasons, and it keeps us from a breakthrough that we need. And that's what happened right here. It said in the beginning they were amazed, and then sure enough, that offense, that scoffing came in. No, 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 this is just the carpenter's son. They didn't see him rightly. And you know, if you read the Bible, all before that, the Lord was, there was miracles happening all over, but here he comes into his hometown, the place where he should be celebrated the most. The people that know him saw him grow up. And here they just see him wrongfully, so they cannot receive. Let me say this in love for all of us. This isn't about me and Michael. 
if you want to see your leaders wrongfully, you will not be able to receive. I tell even our students that for their presence group leaders and people that we have in leadership, if you, if you don't see them rightly, you will not be able to receive from them. If you're determined not to like me, it's okay, you won't be the first, you're not going to be able to receive a word I say tonight. And until you change your heart and give it to the Lord, it will be like, it doesn't matter if the scriptures blow your mind, you will put a wall up to go, I will not receive, my heart will not receive what this girl has to say. And that is what happened here. And if it happened to Jesus, it can happen to anyone. And our hearts can do that so easily with people that are just giving the word of God. It's so hard to get through to someone who has decided already in their heart that they don't want anything you have to say. They might call you pastor. They might call you their leader. They might, could be a parent. And the Lord has to break down those walls because we need people that will lovingly correct when we need to be corrected. I love, I mean, maybe it's weird, but I love being corrected. I don't need you guys to come and correct me after service, okay? I have a team of people in my life that will lovingly jump on the chance to correct me. But I need it. It grows me. I don't think I would be trusted in leadership like I am now, Michael or me, if we weren't people that were very teachable and correctable. We weren't always that way, though. But through the years, we learned if we're ever going to grow, if we're not going to stay in this cycle of entitlement or whatever it is that we were in, we have to open up our hearts and let people that we trust and that, we have, that God has put in our life correct us and grow us. Because if not, we're going to stay the same. Actually worse, we're going to probably go backwards. Too much is given, much is required. So if you want God to use you in greater measure, it's going to take finer pruning and purifying. It's impossible to have it without that. So that's the beauty in it, the, the, the refining, the pruning, the, the, the stripping away, the, the, the things you see in your life that you're like, man, I'm not happy with that. I have to give it to the Lord. It could be so simple as the way you talk to your spouse. If you get convicted, make it right. If you talk harshly to one another, that should convict you. you. Give it to the Lord. None of us are above these things. We all need Jesus. I want to talk about how entitlement brings offense. That's a big one to me. Lots I can say about that. But I think it's really important that we all understand. I tell this to our team all the time. I tell it to myself all the time. Michael says it all the time. We are all replaceable. We are all replaceable. Me, replaceable. Joel, I love you, buddy. Replaceable. Henry, you're not replaceable because you're so scary. But um, <laughs> we're, all, we're all replaceable. Every single one of us. The moment you start to think, I love Henry. The moment you, you start to believe that nothing can be done without you, guess what? You're just signing yourself up to be replaced. This is not about us. We're not that great. People go, oh, don't say that about yourself. No, no, this is the Lord. This is not Michael. This is not me. Our worship team is fantastic and beautiful, but this is not, this, they can't do this. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's the Lord that builds the house. It's the Lord that has done this. If I lose gratitude and become offended, I will be replaced in a moment. God will just raise up some other people to, to have what God is doing here. It's his work. It's been going on long before we were ever born. It will be going on long after. So you have to have that kind of mindset. And a prideful heart would say, no, 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 it's all about you. And no, 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 that's, that's, that is just, that's humility in a weird way. No, it's not. This is Jesus. I know Michael's been hitting this, and I've, I've been hitting it a little bit too, but please, I said this the other time I preached, I don't know when that was on Sunday morning, do not touch the glory. Please don't touch the glory. It's so holy. Don't touch it. You have nothing to do with it. You have nothing to do with it. I know people that have been replaced because I know they touch the glory. 
they started to believe that it's been about them. It was me that brought the crowds. It was me that did this. Look at what I did, what I did, what I did. I know people that have talked like that and they're not around anymore. Why? Because you cannot touch it. And if you have, you have to repent for that deeply because this is not about us, it's all about him. It's all about him. And an entitled heart, a heart of entitlement, I should say, would come in and go, this, I deserve it. Never once have I come up here, and I'm not perfect, and thought, my dad built this building, my husband was saved here, I was saved here, we grew up in Orlando, my dad had a big ministry here, so did my grandfather, that I deserve to be up here right now preaching. No, I don't. I don't deserve this. The Lord has done this. I don't, I'm not owed this at all. And I know so many pastors' kids like Michael hit on before that actually think that they're owed something because their family was in ministry. No, you're not owed anything. You have to plow and dig just like everybody else did before you. And that's the most beautiful reward when you can say it's not because of anything besides the Lord did it. The Lord did it. When Jesus' image was birth, I, I, it was through such a broken season for my family, and it was, it was, we had to really, I felt like we were swimming upstream. It's felt like that for a really long time. And I always said, why, Lord, has you, have you made it so hard? Why did Jesus' image not come when the Crusades were just twice a month and my dad was packing out stadiums? That would have been so easy if you would have just handed it on over. Why did, it, why did we have to plow it out from the dirt the way that we have? And I, and I heard the Lord say, because this way I can trust you. If it was too easy, you would have got, the entitlement would have set in. And now I can honestly say nothing was handed to us. And I love it. I wouldn't trade that for the world. Please hear my heart. But a heart that deals with entitlement will say, that belongs to me. Nothing belongs to you. It all belongs to Jesus. You're going to have to plow this out on your own, just like any other trusted servant did. And then the reward is oh so much greater. But if you deal with entitlement, entitlement, you will say, I should be singing that set. I'm just hitting at some stuff because this stuff happens all the time. Is this okay? Okay. I should be singing that set. I should be picked to do transition. I should be the one doing the offering. I'm a much better preacher than so-and-so. I should be the one doing that. Why don't I have a session at this, it's this event? Why haven't you called me to come lead worship? And when entitlement comes in, a fence is right there to follow. Because you will find, like I said earlier, you will find something wrong with somebody else that you feel is owed to you. Why don't they have me on the stage more? Why am I not transitioning enough? I don't know. Ask the Lord. Ask Jesus. I don't know. All I know is he says, do things, and we do it. It's nothing personal. I'm just following the wind here. That's between the Lord and you. But the platform should never be the goal. He's the goal. And how we have to kill that in all of us. I told you that story once when I was like, why do I not have a night session at this event? It was our event, and, right? And I like helped plan it, and I told Michael, you gave so-and-so the night session and me the morning session? What? It's our event. I thought I was owed the night session because I was the wife. Entitlement. We all deal with it. I know, that's a funny, it was funny. It was, it was funny when he said it. I was like, that was pretty witty, and... I feel this big right now, so I'm going to go give that person the session. Don't even give me a session at this point anymore. I don't deserve it. Um, but we all have it. I, I'm, I'm telling you this because I dealt with it many times. And anytime I feel that creeping in, I go, man, this is a dangerous, a dangerous road I'm about to go down. I'm not owed this. This can go away tomorrow. The Lord could strip this from me. Would I be okay with it? If it's just me and Jesus and, and I'm not on the platform, would that satisfy me enough? Because it should. If it doesn't, that's a problem. And that means that there's something in me that's wanting something outside of the Lord. And if I don't deal with this now, this could cause a whole bunch of issues in my life. So I got to deal with it. And that's what I'm asking you. If you deal with that, deal with it. Deal with it. Because if not, you'll feel that it's owed to you. 
And then you'll become bitter when you don't think you get what you deserve. I remember working for my dad back in the day, back in the day, a long time ago. And I remember the pressures that I I didn't realize until now that we're in leadership. And Michael and I talked about this not too long ago, just the pressure that I would put on him as a child because he would give other things away to other people. Moments, you know, in the crusades, things. I thought, this belongs to us. I would honestly have thoughts like that. And my dad knew that I wasn't ready. He knew. But I became bitter and offended at other people that God was using because I honestly thought that it was my time to shine. I am so glad the Lord stripped that all out of me. Thank the Lord. I hope he will strip it all out of you because it happens with all of us. And if you can't find joy in just being with Jesus, you're never going to find satisfaction. Because this world is just filled with so many things that mean nothing. It's all, it's such a, we're overloaded now thanks to social media that can be used for godliness. I know, I'm on it. But we're overloaded with what everybody else is doing. And that's when that comparison thing comes in like a flood, and just overwhelms us, and we start looking at others instead of looking at him. It's a trap. Go to Matthew 11, 25, 30. It says, at that time, Jesus answered and said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and prudent and have revealed them to babes. Even so, Father, for so it seemed good in your sight, all things have been delivered to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, nor does anyone know the Father except the Son, and the one to whom the Son will reveal to him. Come to me. Ryan, you hit this today in the altar call, and this was on my notes. It was, this is, I thought it was really cool. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. You don't just take his yoke. You actually learn from him and you watch him. For I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. There is only one way, one way that you can live free from offense and bitterness, and that is to be like Jesus. That's the only way. Meekness, a meek heart cannot be an offended heart. A lowly heart cannot carry offense because you're giving it to the Lord every time, giving it to the Lord So what, Lord, that you bless that person? Do it more. Do it more. And if I don't feel it, I'm going to pray until I do. And if I need to give them an offering, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do something costly, whatever it is, so that my heart feels right. You know how many times I pray for people that have hurt me, and it just the overwhelming love of the Lord comes on me, and I it just the the heaviness of all of those things just goes away because it's something that we all face. So are we going to build a case? Are we going to give it to the Lord? I hope you'll give it to the Lord. Because I don't know about you, but I don't have time to deal with your issues with me. I just don't. (laughs) I got a life to live. I got kids. I got you. I got Jesus school. I don't have, if I got caught up in that, I wouldn't have a, a free day. I wouldn't have a day of happiness. If I tried to get all of you guys to see me the way I want you to see me and see me rightly, I would waste a lot of time that is pointless. That's why I give it to the Lord. I give it to the Lord. I don't know why these things happen. I don't know why people misunderstand. I don't know why hearts harden. I don't know why friendships go away. I don't know why these things happen. 
but I trust you, Lord. I give it to you. Do whatever it is you need to do. Where I was wrong, this is honestly like, these are conversations I have with the Lord. Where I was wrong, show me Holy Spirit right now so I can make it right. And that just doesn't mean making it right in your bedroom with the Lord. That means going to the person and actually making it right. I think that needed to be said, I guess. That means actually repentance. I talked to someone recently, a, a, a close um, family, and they were talking about somebody recently that, that just, you know, came to them and said, I feel sorry for the way I've been, and I, I'm sorry about it, and I just feel bad, and I haven't, I, I haven't done, talked badly about people anymore. And I said, yeah, that's, that's a great start, but repentance means actually coming to that person and making it right. Yes. Repentance means actually, like, making right your wrong. That's repentance. So that's beautiful, and that's a start. But man, if you've offended somebody and hurt somebody, go make it right to the person. That's repentance, which repentance is a beautiful thing. I don't know about you, but I've never felt bad when I've gone and humbled myself and got lowly and made it right with someone that I hurt. I never felt anything besides, oh, this feels so good. This feels so freeing. I got it off my chest. Even if they don't receive it, I still feel great. Honestly. Because if not, I just feel like there's this thing like constantly in my mind, now you got to make it right. The Bible's really clear. Love one another. I think Francis Chan, when he was here, hit that a little bit. But the greatest commandment is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your strength, and then to love each other. To love one another. Pray for one another. Think kindly of one another. Not break down each other. I don't want you to fail. I love you. Why do we want each other to fail? Why do we have a hard time with, with disagreements and we backbite and try to destroy one another? What's that about? Aren't we Christians? Isn't the body of Christ supposed to, to pray for one another and love one each other? Doesn't, doesn't love cover a multitude of sins? That doesn't mean that correction isn't needed in times, but why do we want to destroy one another? We're from the same body, as Paul says. We need each other. So all that has to just go, or we're never going to walk in unity to one another. The yoke of Jesus is light. If we carry our own yoke, we will carry heaviness and disappointment, a disappointment which breeds offense and division. A yoke was a harness that was used by oxen and other animals to ease the work of hauling a load. It was also meant as a designation of servitude and carrying the burden of a task or mission. That's what it was. So yoke was something. I know we read about that scripture all the time, but it was something that you carried that was heavy. So think of when Jesus says to us, give that to me. This heaviness that you carry, that you feel, give it to me. Walking around the airport all day, I felt just so happy just to take my bag off my shoulder today and put it down. I was like, oh, imagine carrying that for your whole life, this heaviness, this bitterness, this offense, this unforgiveness, the heaviness that, that it, you walk with. And the Lord is right there saying, you don't have to carry that. You don't have to walk around with that strapped to your back. You can actually give that to me. I want it. One of my favorite scripture verses is, cast all your cares upon the Lord, for he cares for you. And as Joy Dawson taught me years ago, casting literally means to throw it to the Lord. And you know what I did? Because I had a lot of these issues. She goes, go in your room and take a pillow, Jess, and throw it. And so you can see what that means. And I did. I looked like a crazy person, I'm sure. But I went and I got a pillow and I was, ah, and I was just like, I... <laughs> I just threw it on the ground as, as hard as I could, and then I was disappointed that it didn't burst because I was like, maybe I should have been stronger. But I tried my hardest, and, and I was like, it just, it, it, I, it felt so good, though. And I called her. I said, Joy, I know what you mean now. She said, it doesn't just mean to be like casually give it to the Lord. It literally means throw it at his feet. 
It's not yours to carry anymore. And that's what the Lord is saying here. Like, I'm giving you my burden, which is light and easy to take. Give me your heaviness. Give me your weariness. Give me your trials. Give me all the things and lay them at my feet so that you can become more like me. There is a side of Jesus you'll never know until you taste betrayal. Why? Because he was betrayed. There's a side of the Lord that you'll never know unless if you walk through these things. It's a beautiful invitation to be more like him. What do you mean, Jess? I don't understand that. Well, if you say you want to be like Jesus and know him, know his sufferings, know him, know him intimately, you're going to walk through betrayal and persecution. It's promised in the Bible. It's not just a maybe, it's a guarantee. You will walk through it. If you haven't yet, God bless you, but you're going to walk through it one day. If you want to be a leader, oh, you're going to walk through it that much more. Know what you sign up for. You're going to be misunderstood and talked about and all those things, and you have to go, gosh, the flesh wants to fight, but the Christ-like mind goes, I want to be like Jesus. Keep turning that other cheek. I've told this story before, but I don't think I've ever told it at church. But years ago, I was mocked for my testimony. It was someone that knew me from the past. They mocked me. They made fun of me. It was beyond hurtful. I started bawling as soon as I heard about it. It broke my heart. And I was sitting in my room, and Michael came in, and I go, I'm just so angry. This is so below the belt. I've worked so hard to be free. I've, I did all the things I needed to do. I even called Bill Johnson, and I said, man, the, the, I didn't say man. <laughs> I said, that's not how I would talk to Bill. I said, this really hurts. I, I, I haven't dealt with shame since I came to Reading, and now for the first time, I feel shame again. And this was, it's not my story anymore, but... This person is mocking me and making fun of me now that the Lord is using me. And and what do I do? It hurts so bad again. I feel like I'm reliving it again. And he said something along the lines. He goes, you fought for your freedom. Don't you dare listen to that. So he said, don't you dare listen to that. He goes, you fought. I saw you fight. He goes, the devil's trying to get you with shame right now. And don't you let shame come in. And then my husband came in the room and he said, I know you don't want to hear this. He goes, you have every right to pick up the phone right now and tell that person off. Yes, he did say that. He said, you have every right to feel angry and hurt and to call that person right now and let them know how you feel. He goes, or you can see this as an invitation to be more like Jesus. He goes, isn't that what you asked for? I said, yeah, I pray that all the time, but I didn't know I really meant it. Because, but he goes, isn't that what you wanted? You asked the Lord to be more like him. And he goes, so right now, instead of getting angry at that person and fighting back and defending yourself, which is what the human nature wants to do, he said, you can go in the prayer closet right now, which is just my closet. And he goes, you can go in there and be with the Lord and ask him to soften your heart towards that person. And this could be a holy invitation just to be more like Jesus. Which one do you want? Uh, that one? I mean, what, what, would I, what would he say to me if I said the first one, right? It's Michael. But I was like, oh, and you know what? When I went and prayed to the Lord and gave it to him, oh, he visited me in such a beautiful way that day. And I remember that. And every time we get hit with this again, and it's like, you know, it, it never ends. You're always going to offend somebody. You can't, especially when you have a ministry school. It's like, <laughs> it's just, it's, it's, I love all of you guys. But um, you just, there's just, it's, there, there's like Danny Silk said once, it's like you have a church and now you have a ministry school. Now you have hundreds of more people to have an issue with you. I'm like, that's, that's a, yeah. Yeah. I never thought of it that way. Now I'm scared. But um, it's true, it's easy when you're not leading people because you don't have not as many opinions, you know? But every time we walk through that, it hurts. And I, and I love people really deeply. And, and I, I feel like I, I'm not perfect, but I love with my whole heart. I don't, once I love you, I don't really hold back. If I don't love you, I, <laughs> I'm guarded. But um, not that I try to be, I'm just saying it's just like once I'm in, I'm in. I'm kind of that kind of person. And so I, I feel like I give my heart 
away, so when you are misunderstood, it hurts deeper. It just does. Especially when you trust people with things that are so sacred to you, like your ministry. It hurts. But I thought, I can give that to the Lord again. And maybe every time these things come our way, I can just keep giving it to Jesus. And then he'll soften my heart even more and break down anything in me that's still there that doesn't need to be. And I can have an invitation to love like he does. Because I sure don't know how to do that yet. But when I read about him, I want to be more like him. I want to be the kind of person that washes the feet of someone that is about to betray you. Jesus knew Judas was about to betray him. That was someone close to him. It hurts more when someone's close to you. It hurts way more when it's someone that you trust and love and walk with and they see, they see you in the highs and the lows, of course. But that's what our Lord went through. I want to be lowly like that. The reason I'm talking like this is because if you live an offended life, you won't have this invitation to be lowly like that. Because like I said earlier, you can all find a reason. You can find a reason to be offended with your neighbor right now that's sitting next to you. Well, I promise you, I don't like the way she smells. Okay, be offended. <laughs> I'm telling you, we, the things that we come up with, the things we talk about, the things we look about in others, how, how, how about we start seeing people the way that the Lord sees them? How about we ask the Holy Spirit, give me a heart for this person. Soften my heart. Don't let offense come into my life because I don't want a part of it. I don't want it. And like I said earlier, and, and, and maybe there's someone in the room that needs this, but don't sin by being offended to other people that are offended by you. <laughs> don't do it. Don't let their sin become your sin. You have to give it all to the Lord and say, What's my purpose of this? Why did I post this? Why did I say this? Why did I do this? Why? What's the why behind it? If it's not to be more like Jesus, then the why is off. So everyone is yoked to someone or something. The question is, to whom or what do you want to be yoked to? I want to be yoked to the cross. I want to be yoked to Jesus. I don't want to be yoked to being right. What good does that do? Maybe you feel good for a moment and then it's done and then you feel convicted. <laughs> and then it, like, I just, wanna, I just wanna be, I wanna walk away and go, I did what Jesus did. We have the option to carry his yoke, not our own. He says, take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you because I am humble and gentle at heart. See, it all starts with the heart. If you let your heart get offended, you will live that way. I know people that are 60s and 70s and 80s that are still offended at something that happened 20, 30 years ago. Don't you want to be free from that tonight? Don't you want to be free from all the unforgiveness that you have in your heart? Don't you want to be free from the unforgiveness of those that have wronged you or persecuted you unrightly? But don't you want to give it to the Lord? Let him fight your battles and just trust him. And not fight your battles. So your, your, your heart should never be, Lord, deal with them. No, no, no. Have mercy on them. Have mercy. But I don't need to defend myself, Lord, because you're my defender. You're the judge. Like Michael said so beautifully not too long ago, he said, think about how the Lord stood there right before the cross with all of his accusers. And he stayed silent because he knew there was a better judge. He knew there was a better judge. I think of that scripture all the time, that passage, I love it, it's one of my favorite. How when they were throwing the accusations at him, he just stayed quiet. But when they said, are you the son of God? That's when he spoke truth. But when the accusations come, he didn't say anything. He stayed quiet. But when truth was spoken, that's when he would speak up. Yes, I am, but I wanna be that way. I want a tender heart, and you have to fight to have a tender heart, let me tell you. You have to really, really, really put your heart 
and soul and your energy and your mind to go, I refuse to be offended. I refuse to deal with jealousy. I refuse to deal with bitterness. I refuse to have unforgiveness. I refuse to have pride, self-righteousness. I, wanna, I didn't even get through a lot of my notes, but I have to say this because I think it needs to be said. Real quick, offense kills faith, by the way. The woman, remember the woman that God called a dog? Do you think she could have been offended? Would you be offended if I called you a dog? I'd be offended if you called me a dog. But what does she do? She didn't let that get to her. It actually increased her faith and she fought. And because of that, God moved. Just imagine if she had an offended heart and walked away from that moment. But she chose to hold on to Jesus. So when you have offense, whatever you're carrying and holding on to, that will, that will determine your circumstance. And Jesus said she had great faith. He saw her, let me say it like that, as someone who had great faith. Why do I say that? Because you're going to have to work to not be offended. You are going to have to work to not find fault in everyone that you know. You're going to have to work to live free from unforgiveness and bitterness and strife and all of those things. It's actually going to be costly. What does that look like, Jess? It looks like not partaking in it. Well, I just want to be a friend. Well, then go tell your friend to be quiet and stop talking about such negative things and, and speak truth and, and don't let your ears hear the things, these these dainty morsels, which the Bible calls gossip, it says they're dainty morsels that go deep into your soul. Well, morsels are not big, but they go deep and hard because that's what it does. You have a choice to not live that way. In my opinion, I really feel like this needs to be hit a little bit. If you're dealing with offense, you're also dealing, in most times, not always spiritual pride. You are also dealing with self-righteousness. What a spiritual pride does, it comes in and it alienates. It, you isolate yourself. You start to believe, no, 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 they've got it all wrong. I'm the only one that got, has it right. So I'm going to disconnect from a body of believers because they do things improperly and I have the only way. And then isolation, I talk to, we've talked about this with our students every single year. Isolation is a very dangerous thing. Like I said earlier, we need each other. We, we need the body. Paul says, forsake not the assembly. Why? Because we need each other in the body of Christ. The world is dark enough and hard enough as it is. But we start to isolate from others, even leaders, friends, family, because why? You become unapproachable and uncorrectable. And the self-righteousness that's when you aren't aware of the mercy of God and you are more aware of your own righteousness. It's something that runs rampant in the body of Christ and it doesn't need to. When you become deceived, I'm almost done, but please stay with me. When you become deceived, you can't even deal with your offense at this point because you're so blind. That's why I feel like the Lord is having me hit this a little bit today. Let's deal with it now before it turns into deception. Because once you're deceived, like Francis Chan said the other night, which I'm not, it was just a wild night. I mean, he, wow. But deception, you don't even know you're deceived. Well, I don't want to be deceived. And I can so easily be deceived. So I want the Lord to examine everything in me right now so that I can get it out and deal with it and give it to the Lord before I start believing my own way. Let's just pray actually for a moment. I have more to say, but I think I'm done. Thank you, Jesus. Just for a moment, would you just posture your heart would you just ask the Holy Spirit right now if you've dealt with offense and bitterness? Would you ask the Lord to show you 
If you've dealt with unbelief, pride, entitlement, self-righteousness, any of those things that I hit on tonight, can we just stand for a moment actually? Oh, Holy Spirit, we ask you right now, just agree with me, church, to reveal those things, Lord. Whatever it is, Jesus, that we've put, Lord, above you, God, if there has been anything, Jesus, we give it to you right now, Lord. And Holy Spirit, I ask that you will just be like a x-ray right now on our heart, and we will see all those things, God, that we put in the way. Lord, if there's unforgiveness, Lord, we give it to you right now. You know, as I'm praying, if you just need to come down to the altar and just give it to the Lord, I wanna invite you down to the altar and we'll probably worship for a moment. But if there's any of these things that you just wanna come down and give it to the Lord, and this is so beautiful, I love your hearts. But there's unforgiveness, Lord, we just thank you, God, for completely, for completely healing our heart from that. If there's pride, God, entitlement, Lord, give it to us, or give it, we give it to you, Lord. Show us right now, Lord. Show us, Holy Spirit, where we're weak, Lord. Show us. Thank you, Father. Oh, Jesus, any entitlement, Lord, we give it to you right now in Jesus' name, Lord. If we started to believe, Lord, that it was about us, God, if we got in the way, if we started to puff ourselves up, Lord, forgive us, Jesus. Come on, just pray. Just pray for your brothers and sisters right now. This is beautiful. The Lord's doing some some heart work tonight. You don't know, maybe, maybe the Lord is stopping you from completely destroying your destiny with, with pride and selfish ambitions and, and offense and bitterness. And unforgiveness is a sin, my friends. Unforgiveness is a sin. The Bible's very clear. If you don't forgive others and the Lord cannot forgive you and you don't want to be separate from the Lord because you can't let go of unforgiveness in your heart. I don't care if it's someone that you've had unforgiveness towards for your whole entire life. Tonight's the night to give it completely to the Lord in Jesus' name. If our prayer team wants to just start like praying for people, thank you, Lord. If there's offense towards even leaders, old leaders, maybe they're not even in your life anymore, pastors, if you've been hurt by church and you've closed off your heart for the Lord, I wanna invite you down here as well. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We give you those burdens, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We love you, Lord. You're not coming down to the altar just to beat an altar. You're coming down to make it right with the Lord and ask for forgiveness for holding these things in your heart. They've been held captive for too long. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. We love you, Lord. This is beautiful. This is beautiful, Lord. Oh, Holy Spirit, whatever we've held on to that we need to let go of, Lord, we give it to you right now in Jesus' name. Whatever offense, God, or issues or anything like that, unforgiveness that we've held on to, we give it to you right now. Any jealousy, Thank you. If I can get the band up here just for a moment too, the band, please. And we're just gonna worship for a second because I really, I can't stop this because I really feel like there's many people that God is setting free from this. And I even feel like there's some people that have been holding on to unforgiveness for 10, 20, 30 years and even things that have happened that you had every right to feel hurt, but you've got to give it to the Lord and let Him completely cleanse you from that. Thank you, Jesus. And if you're sitting in the room, just pray, just pray in the Holy Spirit, just pray in the Spirit, just pray to the, to the Lord and ask Him to touch your brothers and sisters. Thank you, God. If you've judged others wrongfully, I also invite you to get down here. If you have a heart of judgment towards others, if you critique, if you deal with self-righteousness, if you deal with any of that stuff, entitlement like I hit, also come down here and give that to the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Jesus, thank you, Lord.
to the Lord and we'll see where we go. Just, just sing in the spirit and we'll see where we go. given your ex-husband and the Lord wants to completely set you free from that tonight. You've held this, this offense in your heart and you, you didn't even know that you were offended, but you haven't been able to let go of the past pain and the Lord wants to heal you. So Lord, we give that to you right now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. We give you that, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, Lord. If we've critiqued one another, God, we give it to you right now. Give me something else on the instrument. Just change it up for a second. The anointing of the Lord. Do you know that song? Aaron, you know it. Breaks the yoke of bondage. Maybe just stop playing. The anointing of the Lord breaks the yoke. Learn it. Of bondage. The anointing of the Lord sets the captive free. The anointing of the Lord brings rivers to our desert. I can't do that part. That anointing is raining on me. The anointing of the Lord breaks the yoke of bondage. The anointing of the Lord sets the captive free, sets the captive free. The anointing of the Lord brings rivers to your desert. Your desert. I'll just keep singing. That anointing is raining on me. Come on, church, just sing it with me. The anointing of the Lord breaks the yoke of bondage. The anointing of the Lord. There you go. That's the captive free. The anointing of the Lord brings rivers to your desert. That anointing is raining on me. There you go. Let's sing it again. The anointing of the Lord breaks the yoke of bondage. The anointing of the Lord sets the captives free. The anointing of the Lord brings rivers to your desert. There you go. That anointing is raining on me. Again. The anointing of the Lord breaks the yoke of bondage. The anointing of the Lord sets the captives free. The anointing of the Lord brings rivers to your desert. We'll get that part in a moment. That anointing is raining on me again. The anointing of the Lord breaks the yoke of bondage. The anointing of the Lord sets the captives free. The anointing of the Lord to your desert, that anointing is raining on me. We want to see your glory. We want to see your glory. See, oh, you guys need to learn these old songs. Your glory. See, your glory. 
glory come down. Praise his name, heaven reign. Praise his name, heaven reign. that again. We want to see your glory. We want to see your glory. Your glory. See your glory come down. We want to praise your name. We'll praise your name. Heaven reign. the captives free, the anointing of the Lord brings rivers to your desert, that anointing is raining on me, sing it again, the anointing of the Lord breaks the yoke of bondage, Anointing of the Lord sets the captives free. The captives free. The anointing of the Lord brings rivers to your desert. That anointing is raining on me. There is a river. I know you know that one. There.
setting people free right now. Just keep worshiping him. Oh, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. before we dismiss. There's just a beautiful presence of the Lord that just walked in the room. Oh, Holy Spirit, we welcome you. You're so beautiful, Jesus. Holy Spirit, help us see Jesus rightly. Help us see him rightly. Let the scales fall off of our eyes, Jesus. Oh, Father, we give you, Lord, all of our burdens, Jesus. We give you our weariness. We give you our the weight, Lord, that's been carrying us down, Jesus, Lord. We give you the burden, Lord, of our families, God. We give you the burden of our marriages, Lord. We give you the burden of our lost loved ones, God. We give you that. I feel that really strong. We give you the burden, Lord, of our families, God. The things that we can't fix, but you can, Jesus. We give you those burdens, Lord, of broken friendships, broken relationships, Lord, misunderstanding. We give you those burdens, God. Oh, Jesus, we give you them. We give you them, Lord. We give you them, Lord. We give you our pride, Jesus. We give you, Lord, our doubt, Lord. We give you, God, all those things, Jesus, that we're not meant to carry. You never told us we had to. You said the opposite. You told us to give them to you, Lord. But for whatever reason, we hold on to those things that don't belong in our life. So we lovingly, Holy Spirit, we ask, Holy Spirit, that you help us lovingly give them to the feet of Jesus. We do that right now, Lord. We release, God, that offense in our hearts. We release that unforgiveness right now. I don't know if you need to say the name out, but just do whatever you need to do to be free from that tonight, Lord. We give you that betrayal, Lord. We give you, Lord, that misunderstanding, Lord. We give you that accusation, Lord. We give you that, Lord. We give you all those things, Jesus. We give you all the things that we can't figure out, Lord, and all the things that are too heavy for us to carry, Lord. We give it to you, Jesus. Thank you for taking it. Thank you, Lord, that you want to take it. What kind of Lord are you that you want these things from us, Lord? You're too holy and majestic, but you love to take these things from your children, Lord. And we're so thankful, Lord. Oh, don't let us treat you as common, God. Don't let us treat you, Lord, as just another person, Lord. Don't let us treat your word as common, Lord, and your worship as common, Lord. 
your house, your church is common, Lord, your school, Lord, everything that you've done, Lord, we just thank you, God. We thank you for the cross, Lord. Oh, Holy Spirit, move and have your way, Lord. Lord, I do ask that people that have been carrying this heaviness, Lord, that they will walk out of here feeling light and free. Oh, Jesus, even those that have been carrying it for far too long, God, that that baggage, God, will be gone and they'll walk out of here feeling completely free, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We love you. Oh, we bless you, Jesus. Thank you for the work you've done, Lord. And Holy Spirit, just intensify it. Don't let it go off when we leave this building, Lord. Just intensify it, increase it, Lord. Let our dreams be dreams of peace, God. Let us wake up in the morning happy, God, and just joyful, Lord, like we've never been before. Let us wake up without a bad thought in our hearts, Jesus. Your word says peace, Lord. You give us peace, Lord. The peace that surpasses all understanding. When it doesn't make sense, you give us peace, Lord. And heal the sick in body, Lord, and give them peace as well, Lord. Give them peace to know that you have everything under control. We love you, Jesus. Thank you, Father, for all you've done. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Oh, I don't know how else to end but to say I love you guys so much. And um, if you need more ministry time, if you're sick in body, our prayer team will, would love to pray for you. You're welcome to come down to the front if the Lord is still touching you. You're welcome to stay at the altar. And uh, we will see you next Sunday morning and Sunday night. Everyone, Michael and Jess here. We are standing in the exact location where the headquarters for Jesus Image will be. Local church, Jesus School, uh, House of Bethany, all of that will be located right here. In fact, in the exact spot where Jesse and I are standing will be the beautiful pond in front of the sanctuary where we will most likely be holding baptism services occasionally. So we're so excited. We're right here in Seminole County off of Lake Mary Boulevard. We own this land. God owns this land, I should say. And the building will be right behind us. The sanctuary, the admin building, and the prayer house and so listen, we just want to say thank you so much. Thank you for standing with us. Thank you for giving. Thank you for praying. Thank you for being so patient and believing with us. We're believing God that the nations will descend on this property, that they will worship Jesus, that the sick will be healed here, that the lost will be saved, that the presence and glory of God will rest here. We want that. We believe this is holy ground and that the tangible glory of Jesus will be right here on this land. And so we want to invite you to come and invite you to be a part of what God is going to do here. Yeah, we are just so very thankful for you. Thank you so much for your prayers and your love and support. We are truly blown away with what the Lord is doing and we cannot wait to have you here with us one day. Yeah, and we're really excited about what we're going to show you right now. We want to take you on a journey and show you the incredible design, detail and vision of what will take place on this property. Our Jesus Image home will be located in the beautiful Seminole County, right off of Lake Mary Boulevard. This is a thriving area filled with families, restaurants, and the beautiful amenities that this area provides. The vision of this property is simple. We want the presence of Jesus Christ to be known. We have a deep value for experiencing the Lord in His beauty and the majesty of His creation. This facility will host our local church family, Jesus School, which is our discipleship training program, yearly conferences, the Bethany House of Prayer, and it will also be an outreach hub for the state and nation. There is vision behind everything. The location of the buildings, the landscaping, the water features, and of course the architectural design of the buildings themselves all speak to the beauty of the Lord. We want all who enter the property to feel as though they've entered into the peace of the presence of God. With all the stress and turmoil that people face on a daily basis, this will be a place of serenity, worship, reflection, and adoration. Rather than this feeling like a headquarters, we want this to be the house of God and a home for His people. You will notice that the structures themselves have a timeless look and design. From the stonework to the stained glass, it will feel like the house of God. 
the gospel will be declared from every side of the property in multiple different ways. As you pull into the new Jesus Image home, you will discover a massive parking area that will be framed by and filled with beautiful shrubbery and trees. There will be plenty of room for you and your family. A beautiful drive leads you to the sanctuary building. You will enter through a stone archway. Upon the archway, one of the foundational verses for Jesus Image will be inscribed. This verse carries the heartbeat of our lives and the construction of this house. Only one thing is needed, Luke 10, 42. Upon entering the front door to the main building, you will see a massive gathering area. It is a two-story structure. The first level will be filled with life. This will be a place to congregate with friends and family, to get your children checked into Children's Church, to eat, or simply enjoy a coffee around a beautiful fireplace. The first level will also house the youth room. We have a major focus on seeing this next generation love Jesus. The youth room will seat approximately 500 people. This room will also serve as the second year facility for Jesus School. Our children's rooms will be located on the first level. This will be a convenient experience for children and parents upon their arrival. Our children will receive amazing Bible teaching, a worship experience, and knowledge of the presence of the Holy Spirit for themselves. The second level of the main building will facilitate working spaces for our board of directors, our staff, and interns. This will be a great blessing for us as we move forward in wisdom as a ministry. As you know, God has graced Jesus' image with a massive reach through media. Thousands have come to Jesus, and so many have been healed and set free through our media ministry. We will have our very own production studio where we can create content and continue to stream live to the nations. We will release podcasts, social media content, videos, and much more. Multiplied millions have watched our media content, and we believe our creative team will flourish in this new space as they step out into this vital and anointed calling. As you walk across the main gathering space, you will discover the sanctuary. What an amazing space this will be. While we will have state-of-the-art technology in the sanctuary, the space will take you back in time, a time when churches had a sacred feel to them. You will discover beautiful stained glass behind the platform. Stained glass will line the sides of the sanctuary as well, all telling the gospel story of Jesus. There will be timeless wood beaming and stonework throughout. We long for his presence to fill this place, and it will be a home for you as well. We will seat approximately 1,500 people, yet it will not lose the personal feel that we so deeply value. The platform will be spacious with plenty of room for ministry, our worship teams, and of course, a baptismal. You will notice a round stained glass image on the back wall of the sanctuary depicting a dove in fire descending in the room. May the Holy Spirit fill our hearts each time we gather as a church family. The sanctuary space will also serve Jesus School. This will house our hundreds of first year students as well as our general school sessions. These students will be missionaries to the nations of the world and to their generation. The gospel will be declared from this sanctuary space multiple times per week and people will be raised up from this place to share Jesus with the world. And may millions be saved, healed, and touched by the Holy Spirit. Lastly, for our favorite space in the property, the Bethany House of Prayer. This will be the prayer house for Jesus' image. It will be a place for adoration, silent prayer, reflecting upon the scriptures, and worship. You will notice that the house will be built upon a pond. The setting will be quaint and breathtaking. Stone and wood mark the space with warmth and a traditional look that we believe will transcend generations. We believe this will be the hub of the entire property, a place where intimacy with God and pure prayer ascend before Him. It is named the Bethany House because Bethany was the place where Jesus was loved deeply. Therefore, He rested there. Mary found the better part, and it is our prayer that all who enter will find Jesus there and fall in love with Him. 
May Jesus be pleased with all that takes place here. May he be adored and worshiped on this property. May his word be taught with clarity, boldness, and love. May his gospel flood the nations, and may the generations to come find him here. Will you stand with us? Will you pray and give toward this vision? Will you give sacrificially for the sake of Jesus and his gospel? Will you be a part of something that will outlive you for the sake of eternity? Thank you. We love you. Jesus is beautiful.